So this is Bishop Eddie Crenshaw, uh, the House of Prayer for All Nations in Longview. And um, we're just going to sit down and talk today a bit, little bit about who he is and where he's come from and what, what this journey has been like for you. Eddie, I'm just so, I'm so grateful that you're here in the city. I mean, there's something that you bring, and part of it is your joy that mm -hmm. is like nobody else. And so I, on behalf of the other pastors in the city, I just want to say thank you for landing here and staying here. I think when I was in Klamath Falls, Oregon, yeah. I was called into the ministry. And then I went to school on the bishop, uh, on the pastor uh, Johnson, who taught me and, and schooled us, because there was about 12 of us in that class. Yeah. And, you know, and we went to school and we learned how to love one another and, and everything. And so, but, but while I was there, I, I left there and went to pastoring. So I pastored the house of prayer. How and old were you? I was about, well, let's say, I was probably about 30 in my 30s. Young? Yeah. And so we, we, we went through quite a bit. And like I was telling you, back in those days, pastors didn't pay very much. Yeah. And the church that we had wasn't that big. And, and so we worked and, and pastored. And I pastored that for about probably uh, 14, 15 years. Wow. And then I got sick with the Guillaume Barre. Yeah. And so that took me completely out. How, what was, how would you explain Guillaume Barre? What is that? Guillaume Barre is a disease that actually paralyzes your nerve. All my nerves was paralyzed. The most I could do was to blink my eyes. Wow. And, 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 and do that. But you know, the strangest thing about it is, it actually made my faith stronger. Because, it, it just, let's say it like this, I was in the hospital at Oregon Health Science. Yeah. And I had a nurse to take care of me. Yeah. And you, it couldn't be a whole lot of nurses, just one-on-one. -on -one. A nurse that take care of me all the time, one nurse every time, every shift. Yeah. So she came in one day and she said, she said, Reverend said, uh, I got an accident and I tore up my car. Wow. And she said, but would you pray for me that I get a car just like the one I had? And you know, at that time, I couldn't pray very much because yeah. the knowledge would come and leave me, and I would pray. Yeah. And I would say whatever I could before I drifted off. And you know, God really blessed me there. Wow. Because about a week or two later, she came back and said, I found the same car. <laughs> it's the same thing she said, but I looked under it and had one little drip of oil underneath. And, and you know, at being sick like that, I thought, man, that's one. But you could be surprised how many people came in to ask for prayer yeah. at that hospital down there in Portland. Yeah. I learned, I learned that to have faith in God. Yeah. To really trust what God can do. So as soon as I, I start being able to go out, because remember, I couldn't go out. Right. Because of the sickness and everywhere I went, I had to have a nurse with me. So as soon as I got so I could go out, I started going to church again. Yeah. And the church that I had, God didn't take me there no more. Huh. He took me to Church of God in Christ. Yeah. There, I came out and, become, and became their pastor. So I became a pastor of another church. Another denomination. Another denomination. Yeah. And so it was a great journey. And I learned a lot and did a lot with Church of God in Christ. Yeah. And uh, I pastored that for about seven years. Wow. And then and me, they helped you through recovery then. Mm -hmm, that was really what it was. See, and so, and then uh, I married my wife that I have now. And then we went to Alaska. And we went to Alaska. And we actually started another church. Huh? Word of Life Church in Alaska. But meanwhile, Bishop Jackson, who was here, yeah. was my mentor. Yeah. And I love Bishop Jackson. He was a beautiful and man. He told me, he said, uh, if something ever happened to me, I want you to come down and pastor this church. Well, it was just between me and him. Yeah. I didn't think he told anybody else, but he had told other people that something happened to me, get Bishop Crenshaw to come down here yeah. and pastor the church. And so when he passed away and I found out what he had said, I packed everything I had. <laughs> <laughs> and I came down here. Oh, I am left. Blessing. I left my wife. I left my wife in 
in Alaska taking care of the house and yeah. getting rid of the house and everything like this and closing down the church and everything. But the blessing was a lot of people that was with me followed me here. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, a lot of them followed me here. LaVon, she followed me here, her and Wesley. Yeah. That Wesley came from Clamber Falls. LaVon's your granddaughter. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. And then her mom came with us, and then Sister Val and her husband came, and there was a couple more that came with us. They just came with us. Yeah. They just wanted to be part of this ministry. That's and awesome. so the Lord just blessed us. Well, they came out of Church of God in Christ. Oh, okay. See, so they came from Church of God in Christ. Yeah. And they started their own organization. This this House of Prayer was a part of the House of Prayer in Portland. Yeah. And Bishop, I can't remember his name, but he started it because he came from Portland to set up Church of God in Christ, came from Memphis to set up Church of God in Christ. Yeah. But after, you know, letters was so hard to come by and everything. Yeah that he decided that they had deserted him, so he just started his own church. Uh, and so he started House of Prayer. There was a lot of that going on uh, back then. And so, and that's where it came from. And it's still like the nomination, they believe in holiness, yeah. you know, and, and the bad part about it is, see, I was always a Baptist. <laughs> so being a Baptist. Are you a Reformed Baptist? Then? <laughs> <laughs> or being, being a Baptist, something that they taught, I didn't, Right. Agree with, and one of them was you can't watch television. Ah. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. I, I had a hard time with that, but I got over that. And so once they realized that television not only was for entertainment, but also had a lot of Christian. Yeah. So they allowed it. They yeah. started allowing it. Yeah. And so we was good then. We was good. We was up real tight then. And, and how so, long have you been here, Eddie? I've been here, I think it's eleven years now. Eleven years. This is a mixed congregation, yeah. and it's a loving congregation, because if you ever come in here on a service day or whatever, they're going to love you, yeah. regardless of what you look like, how you act, whatever, they're going to love you. Yeah. Most people that come say they found more love here than they ever found in any place else, Yeah, because that's what we are taught. We, are t we teach is love. Yeah. See, that's the whole thing about it, just love. If you can love somebody, I mean, it'll go a long ways. Yeah. And you got to show it. You can't pretend like you love me and then, you know, you got to really love me. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so I think this congregation has a love of Christ. That's what they want to have. And it's not just inside the walls of the church. No, it's outside. It's outside. Yeah. Because uh, we have people be inviting people all over the place. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people won't come, but they, we at least we invite. God loves you. Yeah. See, if you know that God loves you, no matter what your problem is, what you've done, how bad it was, God still loves you. Yeah. Then I want to tell them, then you get to know God. See, there's a lot of people that don't know God. Right. They think, oh, I go to church, but that don't mean you know God. Yeah. See, you need to get to know God because I like to tell them it's a personal one-on-one. -on -one. It's not between you and your wife. Not between you and your husband, and not between you and your parents. It's a one on one, you and God. And I want to make sure they know that. Yeah. That God really loves them. My favorite thing was when I was sick and I couldn't sing or do anything. There was a group that came to sing to me every Wednesday. Wow. They sung one song Yes, Jesus loved me. Yeah. And I want to make sure that people, if I get to sit down with people, I want to let them know that God loves them. Yeah. Then we can go into all the rest of it. But they don't know that God loves you no matter what. And and that's the thing that people don't understand sometimes. Yeah. That God really loves us. Well, we try to complicate it so much. Yeah. And go into the deeper things of God when most people are really struggling with the fact that they don't think God loves them. That's it. They don't that's think it. they're worth his attention. Uh -huh. Yeah. But that isn't that something? Yeah. And I always think about I, I sometimes I say, Take care of me, Jesus. I heard that on, on the tape one time. Yeah. And and I said be saying, Take care of me, Jesus. Because if he don't take care of you, who's gonna take care right, of you? Right. And so I like to and I like to sit down and talk with young people and tell them how much love God loves them. Yeah. I think one of the greatest things that you can do is teach young people how much God really loves them. Right. 
you know, because see, if all the people that commit suicide and everything else know that God really loves them, they wouldn't do that. Right. They wouldn't do that because they would say, well, God loves me. Yeah. Yeah, Bishop don't like me, but God loves me, you know? So that's the thing about it, you know, and know that God loves them. And I, I want to, you know, the one I'm trying to always say, I like to preach about love. Yeah. I don't like to preach about hell too much and go in there and all yeah. that, but I like to preach about love yeah. and what God have done for people and everything. I like to do that. And I don't want to make it complicated. Yeah. I always tell people that's under me, we want to do one thing. We want to make the message simple and plain yeah. and not too long. Right. Mm -hmm. Not too long? Not too long. Uh, no, because see, <laughs> after a certain amount of time, they lose, you lost interest. Yeah. But I want to make it simple yeah. and plain. That's what I want. I want to make it really simple. I want to make it so, if I'm going to preach it, that young child out there that's three or four years old can understand what I'm saying. Right. See, I'm not, because see, since I don't have different parts of the church, I got to teach all of them at the same time. Right. So I want to make sure that young people, and then they'll go home and tell their parents, well, Bishop said, you can't do that. <laughs> and I had people to say that too. Their child awesome. came home and told them, said, well, Bishop said, you can't do that. Yeah. Because see, that's what we want to try to teach. Yeah. That's what we want to try to tell people. And, and you know, like you say, if you sit down with somebody, you only get that time to tell them what does say the Lord. Yeah. But tell them what, what God loves about them, yeah. that God loves them. You know, if I was if I was listening to this right now, I would think uh, like I, I want to just grab my grandkids and take them over to Bishop Crenshaw and have them just sit and talk to him. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, you could have a real ministry just with having kids brought to you and sitting in front of you and you just sharing the love of Christ with mm -hmm. them. I mean, that's who you are. It really is who you are. That's that's a wonderful thing because yeah. God's been good. Yeah. And you got to understand that when I was young, and I came up in the time when. There was a Jim Crow law. Yeah. After I left when I was 19, Jim Crow law had vanished. But we was always taught to love one another. Right. We was always in Sunday school and always in church. And because there wasn't a lot of things that you could do if you were black back in those times. Right. You know, so it was one of those things. So we was always taught about love. And so whenever I got up and I, I even when I became a minister, and so I preached. I had a I had a young people class that I always taught. Yeah. And I was at I was somewhere at a church in, in Eugene, and some of those young people came up and hugged me and said, "You don't remember me, do you, Bishop?" <laughs> no. I said, "Yes, I do. I remember you." Yeah. Because see, the thing about love is it it, it carries over. Right. And you believe it or not, there's a lot of people that have came and left. But they got the love that they needed. Yeah. See, I'm not worried about how many people be in the church. Right. I'm just worried about putting the love out there. Yeah. So when they do leave, they'll have something to hold on to. Yeah. I, I think that's wonderful. So you have hope. Oh, hope yes. for the church. So a lot of people are struggling with that right now. A lot of pastors and leaders are struggling with hope because they just see the influence of the culture as such a strong thing. And mm -hmm. and um I think that. What you're talking about, Bishop, is the key to a lot of it is staying on on task, staying with the main message, keeping the main message the main message. Mm -hmm. And um, you seem to have an extremely uh, healthy amount of hope for the future. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this year Yeah. with the COVID trying to die down and stuff. I'm looking forward to conventions and going places and doing things because I want to do that. Yeah. And I want to be able to be around the people. And for a long time, we weren't able to do that. Yeah. You know, I ain't never seen it this bad. Yeah. I've seen all kinds of stuff happen. Mm -hmm. But I've never seen churches close down before. Right. I've never seen that. And people get discouraged. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of discouragement in the church, the body of Christ. So my, my hope is that you will continue to do what you do, Bishop Crenshaw, that you'll continue to... Keep this message out in front of God's love for mm -hmm. people because we really need it right now. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, I remember what Bishop told me. Yeah. He said, you never retire from being a minister yeah. or being a preacher. You're always a preacher, no matter what you Did do. Did you hear that? You never retire. You never retire. <laughs> uh -uh, you always. So this church here and this organization I'm in now, yeah. this is a lifetime appointment. Yeah. 
it never, you have to walk away from this. Right. And so as long as God keep blessing me, I'm going to keep doing what I'm able to do. If I have to come out here and sit in this wheelchair and preach from this play, I'm going to preach that yeah. word. Because yeah. I, lo I love preaching. I don't know about nobody else. I love preaching. I don't have to get paid for it. I don't have to get nothing. Oh, I, you don't even have to say you enjoyed it. I just, <laughs> as, long as, you, as long as you let me preach to you yeah. for a little while. Well, I hope you don't <laughs> stop anytime soon. I appreciate you, and I'm glad you're a part of the body of Christ in, in Longview. I'm really glad you're here. I'm happy to be here. Oh, thank you. I'm really glad to be here. We love it here, me and my wife. We love it here. Well, you're I'm a blessed. light in the city. So we've just enjoyed Keep being shining. here. Thank you, sir. I yeah. really appreciate that. We really hope today's episode was helpful. You'll find more resources and content to connect with other community leaders by going to our website, cityservecowlets.org. So it's been a joy to walk with you, and we'll see you soon.